We started up back probably about 1980. Uh, we had nothing and basically what we did, we would take in the animals, bring them home, bring them back to health and home them from our own homes. And we did that probably for about five or six years until we got some money together. Then we um, opened the shop outside and we had the premises in here as well. And we kind of worked out of here. And then we got a, um, basically a garage, a private garage out on St. Mary's Road, which we were able to turn into um, a little sanctuary. And in there we had dogs and cats all together, probably the size of this room, but they all lived together. And we were there, I'd say probably six years. Then we bought the place out in Kilimer and um, We've been working from there and here since. A lot will come in with dogs uh, and the cruelty would be something maybe as simple as mange or flea infestation which hasn't been looked after and um, at present we have one down there, a little greyhound that we picked up last week that has mange and basically all it has got is just tufts of hair going down his back and ball patches all around it but we say coming over his hips down onto his back, his bottom down to back leg, it's just like leather where all the, the hair has gone off it. Simple solution uh, for mange, you just give them a few washes and medicine. Very cheap, but I mean, they didn't th think it was worth it. I mean, it is a pathetic case. That it, it's, it's very upsetting to see it when you know the solution is so cheap, but, but people aren't interested enough to do it. Basically, if we think there's an absolute minute chance that he'll recover, we will give it to it. We don't look on the cost, even though we have no money. Uh, we, we'll pay it eventually, uh, bit by bit. But um, we do have animals sometimes that with the best will in the world. Um, we had a horse last week that was rescued where it was in a flooded field. And we did everything to it, it got pneumonia. But unfortunately, it died. And it, it is sad, it's heartbreaking because um, maybe horses, because they're outside, we don't see them that often, but sometimes we'll have the cats coming in here and. You know, they'll pick up something simple and it's just too far gone by the time we get to them. And even though we we'll try and help them and they'll go to the vets and they could spend a week out there being helped and come down, they could just go like that. It is heartbreaking when it happens, but it does happen, unfortunately, this part and parcel of the work we deal in. We hate it, but if there's a chance, we will give it to them. Well, when it comes to, uh, comes to homing our animals, we're very, very um, strict because of the nature of the animals we deal in, a lot of them are cruelty cases. So we're not going to push them out to anybody who wants them. We have strict guidelines. Uh, we've actually been told that it's easier to adopt a child than to give one of our animals. But we have to be because of the nature again of what's coming in. And you've got to make sure that's going to go into a proper home and that all the facilities are there for it. All our animals, you know, they're not stressed. They are given the best of what we can give them. Um, our dogs in the sanctuary have fields to run in. So, and as somebody said, and it's quite true, that if you know a dog goes to a home, the people go out and they go to work. But in the sanctuary, they have staff with them seven days a week, 365 days a year. And they get into the routine of these people coming in and out. And our staff absolutely adore our dogs and cats. That's one thing I have to say. They really do love them. And they have a great time with them. And they get out and they run about and they have the fun. And those that can run uh, off the lead, we let them do it, especially the little terriers and that, and they go bouncing around the place. And it's just lovely to see them. But then, you know, if the home does come for them, they'll get it. The little Yorkshire Terrier we have here today is called Louis. Uh, we rescued him early, say, probably December or nine. He came in, he was basically skin and bone no hair because he had mange and flea infestation. Uh, he's now, after several months of you know treatment and being looked after, uh, a fabulous little dog. His hair has grown back. His whole body has healed. And um, he just is with Isabella at the moment, who fell in love with him. She took him in and minded him. She was a vo she's a volunteer here with us. And she felt so sorry for the little guy. She brought him home and she nursed him back to health. And now, of course, fell in love with him, and Louis lives with her. He is a good story, and I mean, he is a little doting. And, you know, it's, it's nice to see, see them recovering, because sometimes uh, they don't, unfortunately, if they're too far gone. 
uh, especially if they have been starved, if their body starts to break down, there's nothing we can do at that stage because it's too far. The livers are gone, the kidneys aren't functioning. And at that stage, it's just too late. But uh, he's just scraped by. But he, he's one of the lucky lads. Well, we hope the future will be okay, that with the recession that we can uh, work through it and survive. I mean, we're basically on a day-to-day -day at the moment. Uh, we would hope that we will have a future here, that, you know, the people will support us and that we will get money in from different areas through fundraising and that, and that we can get on and do what we want to do. But um, unless we have the support of the people of God, it won't happen. You know, because um, we can only go so far, but if we have no money, that's it. That's the end of it. And it'll be a sad day for Galway because then there's nothing, nobody dealing with animal cruelty in Galway. But hopefully we will survive.